Curse of Strahd is uh, a very uh, much a horror game. Uh, so we might have uh, uh, it's it's very dangerous and very uh, uh, scary or uh, sad and all that uh, packed into a neat neat package. Uh, first off, uh, I guess we have we know each other, but we can just introduce because now I guess we we already have our characters. We can. Uh, oh, of course, it's a frogman. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, we can uh, introduce the uh, what the character is and who is playing the character, uh, and go around the table. Uh, so I am Sami. I am the dungeon master. I am playing all the characters except the ones that the rest of the players are playing. Uh, who is? Uh, Mackenzie playing. I'm Mackenzie, and I'm going to be playing Alexander Hamilton. He is a bard who has a major obsession with knowledge, wanting to learn as much as he can. His his end all goal is to work for the biggest library um, in pretty much in the world, and he feels like if he can learn as much as possible before he goes and applies for the job he's more likely to to get the position so his very unhealthy desire for knowledge has led him to um be put in jail on more than one occasion um he specializes in um in thieves tools so he is known for breaking into places that have uh, collections of books or knowledges and half the time he doesn't take the stuff the he is either found in the morning sitting reading everything or he's found by the cops sitting and reading everything um so he's not he's not a thief per se but he definitely does break in but if he doesn't feel like he has the time to read it all he will break in borrow it for an extended period of time and then proceed to return it because he does intend on working in a library cool that was a great story uh, who is uh, Katie playing? Well, hello. I'm Katie, and I'm playing Jo. Her full name is Betty Jo, but she goes by Jo. She's the kind of woman who has no patience for nonsense. She prefers a she prefers a life full of authority, structure, and in this case. Usually bailing Hammy out of jail and then teaching him a lesson because curiosity killed the cat. And I don't know how the rest of that expression ends, but I don't want to find out what happens to you if I'm not there. Joe doesn't openly talk about it, but I'm sure Hammy does that they are half siblings. She is a, a former Marine who came home after some time away at sea. And she doesn't have time for your nonsense, but if you need someone to go in there and smack some sense into people or act as a brute muscle, she's right there waiting. Cool. Uh, who is uh, Maple? Is Maple anyone? Um, I'm playing Irene Nobblehorn, and she comes from um, Baldur's Gate in that area. And she's probably not going to tell everybody this, but she comes from a family that has a tavern in that area and is kind of involved in really, some illicit stuff. You don't need to really tell your whole backstory. Uh, yeah. That wasn't my intention of uh, okay. <laughs> introducing yourselves. You don't need okay. to do that. So that can she's happen a little in. tricky. <laughs> but she, um, yeah, so she's basically uh, becoming an adventurer and she wants to explore the world and find new things. And um, yeah. Cool. 
and you're a satyr. Oh yeah, she's a satyr. <laughs> so Claire. she's very like fun loving and uh, hates being bored. Just always wants excitement and new fun things. All right. What about theater? Um, hello. I am Dieter, in fact. Um, I will be playing actually Whitelock in another theater and a rogue by trade. Um, uh, extremely yeah. dexterous and uh, well off in the mind, not so much in the muscles. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, and uh, last but not least, uh, Chris Moondogs. Okay. I'm Chris or Moondogs, whatever. And I'm going to be playing Ronin, who is a human wizard who pretty much has spent his entire life walking city to city, going into taverns, trying to find adventures to teach him how to learn magic or teach him magic. And he's finally done it, so now he can do a little bit of magic stuff. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so, uh, as this is sort of a session uh, zero, we can go over some uh, ideas I had. Uh, first of all, uh, the whole uh, connecting you all together, uh, we don't uh need to uh have uh, you all know each other or or, or uh, the like um of course uh, uh alexander and joe are both uh, uh well they're siblings so they know each other but the rest of you don't necessarily need to know each other um so uh, if you does anyone feel like they would want to know another person in the group I mean, there's a solid chance that um, every satyr knows each other. Well, the two satyrs who are kind of shady and, and <laughs> completely racist exist um, <laughs> in a large city. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. at the very least, like a little bit. Irini has worked in like a. Um a known tavern though i feel like probably in passing they've probably yeah. no yeah. more than passing really. they're probably not like besties or anything but mm. um i know you exist and I know you, you look familiar work. from the place <laughs> right I, yeah that sounds about right i yeah. imagine if if may's character works at, at a well-known tavern i imagine that uh joe might go there a few nights a week just to go blow off steam Maybe vent about uh, who she calls a hammy, but may but maybe your character's never seen this quote unquote hammy before. Hammy. <laughs> <laughs> a mysterious figure, hammy. Cool. And then Frogman is just Frogman. <laughs> I'm just a frog, dude. Yeah. Something special I about mean, me. Th theoretically, since both uh, Alexander and uh, Frogman are book nerds. They could have been in the same book club or something. They're both in book club together. They're both in the same book. <laughs> they're, both, they're both in the same book club in that they band together late at night when the library closes and they go for their favorite books. Yeah, exactly. What are you doing here? This is my book to steal. <laughs> we talked about this. I called dibs. <laughs> One of them's on one side of the shelf and is like pulling it through. The other one's like pushing it and trying to like tug on the same book, <laughs> and that's on? how they met. <laughs> yeah. Um, so then uh, that, that, that's that's all uh, good and fun. I was thinking I have some ideas. Well, for the homebrew rules. Uh, uh, we tried the healing potions, heal the full amount. Uh, do we want to keep that? I would. Um, I don't think I used a healing potion once in last <laughs> one. <laughs> oh, uh, I, 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 I enjoy it being a full action 
uh, but heal the full amount. So it's it's sort of a more a strategic choice than mm -hmm. uh, sort of I don't have any bonus actions. So I might as well just. Uh, well, speak I have a feeling that if I get hit, I'm just gonna die. So. I don't know if healing potions <laughs> will even be helpful for me. I have nine um, health, so I can else... totally understand. <laughs> yeah, uh, I've got seven. <laughs> yeah, I well. Was... Yeah. <laughs> I was feeling really bad at my 15 at level one, but now I don't. <laughs> yeah, barbarian. Yeah, 15 so... at level one is, is really high. That's yeah. more than double mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh my god. Uh, so so let's go f healing potions heal the full amount. Sure, yeah. Uh, that's that's uh, a good one. I'm not even gonna need it. Roll minimum. I'm back at full. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> I rolled, not I rolled not if Joe needs a heal. Oh my God, you guys! If Joe needs a heal, yeah. Yeah. we're just gonna spend like our entire turn all healing Joe until it's back to full health. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Do we like uh, flanking, giving plus two to attack? Sure. I do. I do. I do. <laughs> as long as they're like right next to them, and then I get the flanking. My God, they're going to all fall. Yeah, but uh, but enemies one. also. Yeah, uh, enemies do also get uh, the the uh, plus two to uh, when flanking. Um, sword. That's, that's another. The, that's the catch, guys. Yeah. Uh, another fun thing that I uh, uh, have seen uh, is advantage. Uh, if you gain multiple sources of advantage, each additional source of advantage gives a plus two to the attack. Oh. oh. So like, Ooh, what's that? Damn, reckless <laughs> attack with prone or something? Get yeah, yeah. Like if you have multiple ways that you gain advantage, each hmm. one adds plus two to the to that's, the yeah, to, that's to hit. Interesting. Like but do the enemies get that? Yeah, of but course. enemies rarely <laughs> get multiple. Sword. I mean, if they have pack tactics and and you are prone, yeah. then, then yes. But and and they're flanking, then they get plus four. Uh, hmm. So I guess honestly, at that point, I might like my own opinion, not everyone yeah. else's, um, is to just do away with advantage and just have the static plus twos for everything. Hmm. But advantage is is relevant for rogues, for instance. Like when when do you get a sneak attack? Well, when you have it. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, and I, yeah. So if there's multiple uh, situations that would cause you to have advantage, say reckless and and prone, you would just yeah. get plus four to your attack instead of getting. No, no. You get advantage plus two. Oh. For, for, okay. First advantage okay. grants you advantage. Second advantage grants you plus two. Uh, third advantage grants you plus four. Got uh, it. So okay. Forth. Yeah, that yeah. I would be. I would be fine with that, even with the enemies having something like that, because to get yeah. double advantage and not be able to use it kind of sucks. Yeah, uh, and and I guess if we do it the same thing with disadvantage minus two, if you have multiple sources of disadvantage, or do we only want to go with advantage? No, I'm fine with disadvantage too. No, no, no. It's got Let's to do everything. I, I think yeah. you do need to do yeah. both ends of the spectrum. Yeah. Fairness. So advantage slash disadvantage uh, plus two slash minus two with multiple sources of that grant you that. Okay. Uh, cool. And if something gives you, if two things give you advantage and one thing gives you disadvantage, Can't then or no, you get one advantage. Yeah. You get advantage. And then yeah. if three things give you advantage and one thing gives you gives you disadvantage, then yeah, yeah, <laughs> then, yeah. Then, then, then you get then advantage. You just get confused. Then yeah. you're just confused. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The, then we're we're all on the same page. Okay. I'll be here all <laughs> session. All oh, campaign. Yeah. yeah. All campaign yeah. unless I yeah. die. Yeah. So still so, coming back though. Yeah. This, this gives uh, uh, this gives some interesting. Uh, I mean, you can strategize like we really need to hit this thing. Let's give him all the things to give him advantage and plus six to attack, and then he. And then not, you know, adds all the sneak attack or, or you know, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. 
I'm uh, all for more pathfindery rules. All right. <laughs> I can hear Deer uh, smiling on the other end. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, all right. All right. I don't appreciate being called out like that. <laughs> It's okay, Dieter. We've all acknowledged that you're a special little snowflake, and that's just the way it is. You really don't have to word it that way. How dare I point out facts? Shame oh. on me. Um. <laughs> well, okay. So, uh, great. Uh, <laughs> brutal criticals. I don't like that because uh, it kills you. <laughs> Fair enough. Cool. Non flashbacks. Yeah. Don't want that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, even without brutal, you might die, but it's less likely. I don't. Know. Yeah. So, um, another thing: this is a a, a a horror game where tensions are high. Um, secret death saving throw. I roll everyone's death saving throws. Yeah, I love, I love that. Yes. And I I, I, I give you I saw him. I, I yeah. Problem. My solemn promise to never fudge uh, the death saves. That's it. Yeah. Someone time stamp this and call back to this moment when one of us fails a death save. <laughs> <laughs> I take it back. I want to make my own save. <laughs> Do we like that? I got two ones in I a mean, row. I'm cool yes. I'm always, that's like my favorite. I, I think it's fun. I'm, I'm okay. fine either way. Secret I panic both saves. ways, so it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is anyone strictly against the idea? That sounds I like heard no. the, the sound of, sound of silence. Okay. Sound so, silence. Yes. Um, let's see here. Um, okay. I, uh, I'm bad at granting inspiration. Uh, I need to learn, learn that. Um, I could try and figure out instead of inspiration, which you know you can have advantage on any d twenty roll, um, to have some sort of customized inspiration for each character. I'll come up with something so that when your character uh, has an inspiration, you can instead, you know, your your next. Uh, damaging spell deals uh, an additional die of damage or um, plus something AC for the bard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I something... have 14 AC. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, that's that's not great, but not bad. It's not bad for a uh, bard. Sure, that's true. Uh, Free shield. Yeah. So... So uh, uh, I, I I might I might uh, consider that, but that's I guess my my uh, decision also how I grant inspiration mm -hmm. and if, if it's uh, in any way. Uh, but I I might remember to give inspiration more if it's something that I'm like oh right I've got this thing instead of uh, yeah what's inspiration again? Um, yeah yeah no but uh, <laughs> it's not uh, uh, something I always remember. Uh, cool. So we've got that. Um, then we had a, a, I asked about the dynamic lighting, uh, being not uh, explorer mode, but rather you, you only see what you see and you don't see what you've explored already. Uh, May was, uh, uh getting Directionally uh, challenged. Directionally challenged. <laughs> yeah, that, that's like you're saying that if we, like we the when we go into a different room, the room we are already in just turns black and we can't see anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm opposed to that one. I don't okay. like that one. Okay. Uh, I mean, I mean, I don't mind if my character will be directionally challenged because I, as a player, am directionally challenged. <laughs> I I am in the same boat with May. In that aspect, yeah. yeah. Just, just uh, keep just in mind, we're like, gonna be very dumb. <laughs> my character, ha my character has an intelligence of sixteen, which is directly related to memory. So, I don't know. yeah. I mean, I uh, it, like it would it like your memory of directions would help you. Like, if you ask me at some point, like uh, mm -hmm. where where were we, and I can like, okay, uh, you you've been here, 
it looks familiar or you know whatever um, oh, okay but just but, every uh, single room you enter oh you have a sudden sense of deja vu yeah just take the keen mind feet always yeah. know which way is north right blah, blah, blah. remember everything uh, from the last 30 days yeah. yeah, the idea is that there are uh, uh, dungeons in this dragon game uh, that uh, are what? they are built with the intention of getting you lost. Oh, uh, like... I mean, if if we're supposed to get lost, then sure, I guess. <laughs> but yeah. then we could do that. Uh, I mean, yeah. It's, I really it's am also... going to take the keen mind feet. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave a trail of breadcrumbs. Yeah. Uh, There's a mammoth that's following can... us just eating the breadcrumbs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but we can we can keep uh, uh, explore mode and see and touch on that later on if we want to yeah. have more excitement. I would be fine uh, if if, you, wanna, if, if dungeon... you run into a dungeon like that. If you turn yeah, it off for if that, if dungeons are intentionally to be like supposed to be like that, then sure, go. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I'm putting dynamic light explorer mode off. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. For maybe now. Okay. okay. Uh, I don't actually know that we need to do anything else. Uh, I mean, I, the, the idea is weekly on, on Saturdays, as we've been doing all this time. Um, the 26th, I will be gone. The, the 19th, I will be gone, I think. Mm. Uh, because I'm, yeah, I'm leaving. I think I'm leaving right around there and returning on the 28th or the 27th. Um, from uh, Christmas uh, holidays. So I think there uh, will be a game to this week and next week, and then again next year. <laughs> Damn. Awesome. We have to wait till next year. Yeah. This it's year. not that far away. I'll survive. <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I think that's about it. Does anyone have any topics they want to bring up? Just to go mm. off of Dieter's snarky comment from earlier, Alexander also has a 16 <laughs> in intelligence, but that does not mean Mackenzie does, and she remembers everywhere she went. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I can help help you out in uh, remembering things like that. I'm not. I'm actually. I'm just gonna get. What's up? I have a ten. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean <laughs> Ronan. Is, we've got three intelligent characters at least here because Ronan is a wizard, so <laughs> he's probably oh, the, the, the smartest uh, one. Intelligence could you. be my dumb stat. You don't know. You could be. <laughs> it would be very fascinating. You have zero spells <laughs> if you can't add any. <laughs> I, don't know. I think I think there's a minimum of one spell to you. I'm I'm a wizard with an eight intelligence and fifteen strength. Damn. Yeah. In my defense, in my defense, yeah. I don't need to be smart. Just tell me what to hit, and I'll hit it. Yeah. But if you act stupid, I'm gonna hit you. Just so just so we're clear. <laughs> be Part smart, so you don't get hit. Yeah. Uh... Especially Hammy. If Hammy acts up, which is gonna be always, is going to get hit. Damn. Yeah. Abusive. Uh, all right. Um, all right. I, there was the topic I brought up in the other group uh, in that, uh, seeing as this is a brutal game, uh, uh, do we want to have this, how do you want to do this moment where you get to describe all your uh, sweet killings and things like that? Mm -hmm. I would. I feel creatively challenged if it happens every single time, mm -hmm. but I do want it some of the time <laughs> at least. Great. All right. Give yeah. me the big bad guys. I'm just like, uh, stab the thing. All right. So I'll 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 take narrative control, uh, except when uh, you you f finish off someone important, or yeah. the final thing, like the final yeah. thing of everything. 
the final like it, it at the end of 20 2021 when we are at the end you get to your first and only how do you want to do this <laughs> this is strad <laughs> yeah you and strad <laughs> Finally, I got to describe what I came up with in last year. Uh, <laughs> have notes and everything. Uh, yeah. Uh, also, um, how do we want to uh, do this? Uh, um, Sammy, we just there... told you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the... the first goblin out of a thousand. How do you want yeah. to do this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come on, describe it in brutal detail. Uh, so uh the the campaign has like uh very uh i guess sensitive subjects i don't know like uh uh child torture uh and oh, hell yeah stuff dude. like that uh are we right. all cool with that? yeah that one's good yeah <laughs> prefer more of it <laughs> i mean Give me like, all of it yeah i mean <laughs> The, like, the teachers I, are over there like, oh no, it's it's real life for us. I think it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so I'll just add even more. Just you, you enter a random bar and you just see okay. another <laughs> person next to the tavern keep just cutting off baby heads or something. Oh no, just give them really just give them really hard math problems <laughs> and they'll just be struggling enough. Okay. Physically. Yes, there we go. Okay. Mental that's torture hard. but not physical. That's what I meant. Okay. That's what, that's what uh, my joke okay. was aimed for. There yeah. we go. Good job, Mackenzie. Mental, mental you torture. Can, you can feel this word. Physical torture, <laughs> but mental torture is the one that lingers. Like that one time yes. that you threw up oh, that yeah. math problem in front of the class. Or <laughs> you can translate Peach into Spanish even though you were the smartest kid in class because you didn't study the night before. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> torture. Hmm. I don't, I don't, sure. I, I don't, I don't know that from personal experience. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, cool. I'll close down that. Oh yeah, I need to add uh, a bunch of uh, stuff as well. I want to do that. Uh, great. Um. All right. Uh, so, um. Let's get into it. Yay! Yay! So what happens first is that everyone has a prophetic dream. Um, now I have written these myself, so they might not be the uh, Shakespearean experiences that someone might expect, but uh, <laughs> uh, let's see here. If I... Uh, reveal your dreams. You should find them in the handouts. I love when my dreams are handed out to me. <laughs> yeah. Like readable dreams. And uh, yeah, because oh, I man. like 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 one one option is that we go into another channel and I tell you the dream. Uh, uh, or you get you just get the dream handed to you, and there, <laughs> that's I, funny. Everyone has their dream. What? <laughs> ah, so just like home. So, um. I'd say you you you've tr started traveling and you are getting nearer the town of Daggerford as you get this prophetic dream uh on your way there and um you might all be traveling from different directions or uh maybe uh you are traveling um I would say uh, Alex and Joe would travel t together, but the rest of you are tra traveling on your own. Maybe, maybe uh, uh, Irene and uh, uh, Etri are traveling together as well. Mm. But uh, otherwise, you're yeah. sort of traveling in three or four groups uh, from 
wherever you go. And uh, so, I don't appreciate that there's no Oxford comma. <laughs> there's no Oxford comma. As I said, I, yes. I it wasn't the Shakespearean experience you were hoping for, but the one you deserve. Um, I deserve the Oxford comma. Clearly, you don't because oh. it's said Clearly so. Clearly, you don't. Yeah. This is. <laughs> I looked into it, and uh, this is what came up. If your uh, intelligence stat was one point higher than maybe, but as it stands mm -hmm. right now, no. Yeah. Uh, so. Oh, no, that's just mean. What? <laughs> uh. Uh, so you travel toward uh, Dagger Ford, and uh, everyone um, knows of the uh, Nightmare Stable as an inn in Dagger Ford. So I Mm -hmm. Would imagine everyone heading toward that inn. We're sort of starting off with everyone coming to to the inn, and uh, we can um, we can go through and see as uh, Alex and Joe. I assume you travel together. Yeah. All you right. Get, you get this prophetic dream, and uh, you are traveling. Uh, you you are about a day's journey uh, away from Daggerford as you get this dream, uh, and uh, continue your travels. Uh, would you have any exchanges on the way? All right, Hammy. We're gonna go stay in this inn tonight. What are the ground rules? Uh, you know, you, you always love to quiz me on this, but believe it or not, it's the one thing I don't pay attention to. I'm going to roll to give my little brother a nogi. What do I roll for that? Um, I'll say you, you don't need to roll. Do, do you, uh, does <laughs> Alex uh, avoid the uh, rugging or no, nugging. He's firmly aware that this is coming and he deserved it. You, you nug Alex. I am Alex. I don't care what peaks your, the weird little whatever is in your head. No sneaking off at night. We go in the inn, we go to bed, we wake up and we go and we head out again. You don't go pilfering through people's shops. You don't go pilfering through people's libraries. You don't go pilfering through people's personal collections of d uh, of dinkies and doodads. We don't have time for you to go get in trouble again. I'm not going to pay your bail off again for you trying to go quench your thirst for knowledge. Would I know if this town has any libraries or books in it prior to us leaving? <coughs> um... Um, roll, roll me a, a history check. Sure. I'm proficient in that. Yeah. I'm not proficient in that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, you, you, you think it's, it's a smaller town. Probably doesn't. But you don't, you're not, you've never been there. No. You know, in, in all, in all fairness, Joe, I haven't been to this town before. So I need to go look around and make sure everything's safe, right? That's that's what we do. We make sure everything is safe, make sure everything's taken care of. If there happens to be a store that sells a book or two, I will go in and peruse. Okay, but tonight when we go to bed, your butt stays in bed. <laughs> I can't promise anything could be good books. And I can't promise that I won't whoop your butt for it later. 
Yeah, if you do. Be, wouldn't be the first time, probably not going to be the last. And as Alex is sitting in the, the cart across from her, he's like playing with a um with a card just kind of like throwing it up and down in his hand yeah. oh you also picking up card tricks now fantastic well yeah i wouldn't call it card tricks per se but i found this card joe will look over at it what does it say um the card that is that Alexander is currently playing with has a uh, has a man on it. It looks like a tarot card. It has a man on it with a hood over his face. Um, definitely a, a cloak on him with a sword on his side, and it says thief on it. Joe is going to look at the card and look at. Alexander and say, ah, so you're pulling some kind of weird magic trick then? I don't know. I just showed up in my hand. Why not play with it? You're the one that wants me to explore the arts and things of that nature instead of just reading and expanding my knowledge. Why can't I play with cards? Well, card. Because I only have one. It doesn't say... Uh, does it say thief? So, the the image that you I think I, 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 yeah, I, I wrote, wrong, I, yeah, I wrote, I wrote the wrong thing. Okay, it <laughs> says it says rogue on it, not thief. My apologies. Joe will raise an eyebrow and go, yeah, I totally believe that you just found that card and hold up her own card. I don't know what kind of arcane nonsense you're trying to pull, but I don't really like it. Oh, and I've I've written rogue, uh, I've written thief on everyone, <laughs> and it should be rogue. Uh, where did you get yours? Dude, I don't know. I had a weird dream, and then I woke up, and I was just like, I should not eat food so late. But now I'm pretty sure that you're the one who did it. Uh, judging by the level of confusion I feel on my face that you must be seeing, you should know that I did not do that. Can I see your card? Her card says Berserker on it. Huh. Interesting. Um, hang on to that, and if you feel like you're going to lose it, give it to me. Hammy, I can take care of my own little whatever this is, and she'll put it back in her shirt pocket. All right. I hope so. Let's go. Let's go over to... Uh, Etri and uh, Irene, I, I would, I could imagine, are you traveling together? Um, probably not at this okay. point. Um, we oh, don't yeah, really I know you, each other you, super you, you, you well. seen each other in passing by, that's fine. Okay, yeah. so, so everyone else is sort of traveling <laughs> on your own. And uh, I'll say everyone uh, is coming to uh, the in um, on a dark and stormy night uh, in this town of Daggerford. Uh, rain pours down from the sky and turns the street to mud. Um, let's uh, uh, go around. Uh, uh, how, how does it uh, look like? What, what, what do we see when we see uh, Let's go with uh, uh, Efri as you walk in the mud. Uh, how do um, you look like? Uh, right. Anyone who would see a tree would see currently a man struggling to, well, a man with hooves struggling to walk through the thick mud and long red and wet hair covering all of him basically uh in darker clothes that are now also excruciatingly wet um obviously this is the site of a satyr and one that doesn't enjoy getting stuck in the mud too much 
Yeah. Uh, what does everyone see as, uh, I'll say sort of, you, you come into this tavern at one at a time, so what would everyone see as Irene uh, walks uh, through the muddy streets of Daggerford into the tavern? Um, Irene is a lot more carefree in her appearance, I guess. So she's sort of splashing a little bit as she's going through the mud. She might find a puddle and purposely kind of splash her hooves in it a bit. Because why not? Life is about fun. And um, she may have picked some flowers on the way and is sort of just, yeah, very carefree. <laughs> not, not seeming to be bothered by the rain. Um, so yeah, she comes in pretty cheerfully mm -hmm. and is looking around to kind of see who's there and, um, yeah. Cool. Uh, what does Ronan look like when he walks in into the tavern? Ronan's just, he's carrying his backpack. He's in a cloak. He's got his white hair and he's pretty old, which is sort of strange for a human his age to be walking alone in a rainy night in the mud not something you see every day but he's yeah you can't see too much of him with his cloak on but mm -hmm. he's just making his way to the tavern all right and uh let's go with uh, alexander what, what does he look like on the path into the tavern so Alexander is uh, six foot four. He's definitely on the on the thinner side. Um, normally dressed in decent looking clothes with a cloak around him, and he definitely has his backpack on his back that's filled with books and stuff like that, um, which he uses the cloak to shield from the rain as he runs inside. Um, he does have a couple instruments on him. One that's on his back is a violin. And then actually uh, kept hidden in his boot is a pan flute in case he ever needs it. But that's not his uh, main spell casting focus when it comes to being a bard. But he has them just in case. And his sister wants him to be a little bit more, um, how shall we say, uh, flirty with women. And apparently music is one of the things that you can do to be flirty. So he's trying that route from time to time. All right. And what does everyone see as Joe comes into the tavern? Joe, well, she's a bit shorter than Hammy. And by a bit shorter, I mean she barely breaks past five, six. Um, she's wearing her, she's wearing the, the kind of, kind of like, like a, a camo, a, button up that's just been unbuttoned with a, with a tank top underneath and a little like red cross on the collar which is just kind of from her former time as a marine she's wearing jeans uh some some nice some uh nice used work boots and she's wearing goggles has her bag pulled over to her side uh, a giant mall a couple of weapons here and there and she's wearing goggles and she has blonde hair and brown eyes and a look of i just don't care on her face sometimes right. it looks it sometimes it looks like a very uh, cocky smirk but other than that not 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 much anything else cool uh just to double check everyone does have a uh... Our characters at first level. Yes. Okay. Good. <laughs> um, so uh, you all come into this tavern uh, one at a time, or uh, the siblings together, and uh, um, you find the tavern empty. The first person who comes in, and uh, uh, the second one. Well, it's empty besides the innkeeper. Um, but uh, uh, as you all sort of come in uh, one at a time, you notice each other and uh, um, you might recognize each other uh, and, and it uh, seems like everyone has gotten uh, directions here. So what happens when, uh, when you all when meet each other? 
Yeah. And Ronan comes in, he's just like, Hello! I am Ronan, the Great Wizard, and I am looking for the Berserker, the Broken One, the Dungeon, and the Rogue. Are any of you those guys? Well, geez, way to announce yourself to everyone in the freaking room. I'm not there's, looking for your snarky response. I'm just trying to get the answer. Are right. you any one of those? And then pull the card out from his pocket that he had been playing with and toss it on the table where I'm presuming uh, he and Joe probably sat down and people would be making their way over, but he tosses his card on the table and it's uh, a face-up rogue card. Do you know how you got this card? I had a dream. He kind of puts, put, cleans off his glasses and puts them back on his face. It's like, I had a but dream. But it's not, it's not a normal dream, though. It's mm. magic! Do you know magic? Do you know the ways of the powerful art of magic? I know some. I'm more interested in reading and, and learning about it than the actual practice of it. Oh. Well, this card is very special. We're meant to do something together. Yeah, there was a lady in my dream. Um, hooded cover. She had a table in front of her uh, with a red cloth on it that said I needed to find the others. Do you know who the others are? Have you met them before? Uh, well, I know who one of them is, and now I know who a second one is, and he kind of, like, gestures up to Ronan. So I found three. I'd say that I'm doing pretty good. Hmm. Who's, who's the third one? Uh, and he'll gesture over to, to, to Joe. Be like the Berserker. Not surprised. Ah, uh, the Berserker. Hmm. Let, let me ask you, are you a bit dumb-witted? I'm just asking because, you know, stereotype of berserkers, they're usually very strong, but not too bright. But don't worry, if you're not too smart, I can guide you on your way. You don't need to worry about anything. I'm just wondering. Joe is going to stand up, put her hands on her knees, and stand up straight, walk over and go, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Oh, my name's Ronan. I'm trying to be a great wizard. You're Joe? Do you, Alex, you said uh, this guy is Joe. Uh, the, the, First of all, I'm a woman. Oh. Uh, Second my... of all, in response to your question, if I'm dumb, I have a follow-up. Okay. How well can you take a mall to the face? A, a mall to the... What? No, what? What's this question about? I don't see how it has anything related to this. I'm just asking if you're dumb. I, I don't know about mall to the face. Does that- There are different kinds of intelligence. I don't think my question is out of line, Mr. Smarty Pants. I can tell you really are the berserker. It's glad to know that he wasn't lying. Do you know? Uh, uh, we can we can go away from the questions. Do you know about the no 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 no? no, 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 no. I'm the one who's saying no. You do not get to say no. Do you know? I'm about going the to other grab people? him by the t by the collar of whatever he's wearing. At at, the, at this point, uh, uh, you uh, the doors open and uh, uh, I'll say that uh, Efri enters. Please tell me more about how stupid I am, and I would love to show you how hard I can hit with a mall. I wasn't saying you were stupid. I was asking if you were oh, stupid. Oh, right. Oh, right, right, right. Sure, big yeah. Difference. I believe you, Mr. Ronan, Mr. Wizardy Fancy Pants. And you see, Efri, you see this, this confrontation taking place. Or Etri, sorry. Uh, you see, Etri, that uh, the confrontation is taking place. How do you... <laughs> react to that. I don't think I do. I you think know, I'm just watching it. Okay. You know, I don't think you're good enough for my mall. Maybe I should just use a hand axe or two instead. How many javelins do you think I can fit inside your Listen, butt? listen, lady. 
you you got oh, that magic card too, right? Thank you so much. Yeah, what about it? That magic card is magic. I don't know if you know magic. Oh my god, the magic card is powerful. magic. I'm so surprised. Who and if you listen, listen, magic? listen. If you go against this magical quest, there are going to be serious consequences. I don't think you completely understand what magic is. So you, you know, better not try to kill me, or else you'll regret it. You know, at this point in the conversation, I'm just watching your mouth go up and down, and I'm like, wow, he's still talking. <laughs> Joe? And uh, from, from across the room, you just hear, oh, I'm going to die. Oh? Oh, oh, are you, do you have a card? Joe's still holding on yeah. to his collar and just looking, <laughs> looking at, uh, at Entry. Oh, good. Are you also a magic caster? Because I'm having a great time with those right now. Can I say no? And no, I don't. Oh, oh you don't have a card. Okay, you're, you're not really ma ma that. Magic. Sorry. Oh, you're, you, hmm. okay. Do you have a, a card that has a word on it? Like dungeon or broken one, something, anything. Is that that was my original? That was my original answer. I no. Oh, I want to say no so bad. You you want to say no? Does that mean no or yes? What does you want to say no mean? I think once he realized that you're in the equation, that he doesn't want to say yes. Joe, why are you still talking? Alex, why are you still standing? Alex, because is gonna I haven't get put up. a hand after your face yet. Alex is gonna get up and go over to to Etri and offer a hand and say, "Hi, I'm Alexander. Would you like to join me at the? Uh, would you like to join me at the bar for a drink while these two sort out their indifferences?" Please, you may be the only reasonable one here. I get that a lot. Alexander Hamilton. Etri Whitelock. Pleasure. Let's go have a beer. And <laughs> Alex leading Etri will lead him to the bar. <laughs> All right. And uh, at that point, Irene also gets into the tavern. The door slam open. So Irene's coming in and she uh, shakes the water out of her hair. Her hair is quite short, so it's only a little bit of splatter, but um, she's sort of like, oh, uh, so sorry about that. And she looks at the tavern owner who hopefully isn't mad at her for making a big muddy mess in the doorway. <laughs> and then she scampers over to the bar to see uh, what they've got on tap today. All right. Uh, yeah, they they do have uh, uh, a selection of uh, uh, wines. Um, I'm going to order a bottle of wine. All right. A bottle of wine. Yes, yeah, a whole bottle. Okay. <laughs> Uh, by the way, Joe doesn't have a token yet, or doesn't have a, a, a picture on, on the token yet. Oh, sorry. Add that. Yeah, no problem. I put it uh, on. Okay, yeah. I'll take care of that right yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I just remembered I want to rename one of the wines, but uh, there, are, there are three wines. Um, or actually, there's two wines and a champagne, and we'll just roll with it. There is no city called Champagne, and Champagne only comes from Champagne. But in this world, Champagne exists. Okay, perfect. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, and sorry, you said the tavern is called the Nightmare or something. Uh, what does it say on your like the Nightmare dream? Stable the Nightmare Stable. Okay. Um, so I'm going to kind of lean over a little bit and ask the tavern owner, um, that seems like a really strange name for a tavern. Aren't taverns supposed to be fun and not full of nightmares? 
Well, I, I just had to pick a name, and I I had a I had a horse. Oh, uh, this place used to be a a, a stable, uh, rebuilt into a tavern, and um, I I just I like the name. Hey, I'm not judging. I'm just curious. That's all. Thank you, good sir. Sounds like and... you are judging. <laughs> she is definitely judging. <laughs> Uh, and then she's gonna look around and see who else is in um, in the tavern yeah. and sort of snoop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Alex and uh, Etri would be also at the um, at the bar, and then you probably see the two uh, other humans uh, battling it out. <laughs> <laughs> at, uh, uh, do I food. overhear their conversation at this point? Sure. What? What? If, so if I hear about magic, I'm going to be excited and want to hear about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is everyone um, saying? Okay. So Ronan, it was right. Still holding on to the collar, by the way. <laughs> oh, so it's that kind of party. <laughs> Joe, you get off me. We don't need to do this anymore. I didn't hear. Please, I'm get a person with manners. Get off I didn't me. hear her, please. Get off me. You know what? Get off me, please. She'll let go and just do an exaggerated like hand motion. Just, See, was that so hard, Mr. I Wizard? take back my please. <laughs> and, I, and I go to Irene. <laughs> Irene, do you, or not Irene, uh, excuse me, do you have a magic card? Yeah, and he also directs that to the innkeeper. Joe's going to walk up behind him very, very casually and smack him upside the head and go sit by Alex and get a drink. God damn, what the hell are you doing? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm getting a drink with my brother. I mean, what? Well, uh, magic cards, do you have any? A magic card? Are, are you the one that's been doing magic tricks? Uh, I, well, I mean, not to brag or anything. But I do have a little bit of magic. He means to brag. Man, I thought I was the bard. Irene pulls out her card and is like, Are you the one who did this? Is that one of those tricks no. that you do where you put things in people's pockets? No, no. I didn't do that. But someone else who does know magic does that. And if we all have these cards, it means that we're supposed to do something great together. It's an epic adventure. Aren't you guys excited? Rini is positively hopping up and down at this point. We just need to figure out what to do now. Well, we need to find I... that lady. We found each other, at least according to my dream. We need to find a lady in a hood that has several black cards face down on a table with a red tablecloth. And Alexander will announce that and then turn directly to the bartender and say, Does that ring any bells to you, sir? No, so, no, that yeah. sounds sounds crazy. Yeah, wouldn't be um, the first time. We've got um, three different uh, drinks here. We have the purple grape mash number three, a beautiful wine. We have red dragon crush, another beautiful wine, and uh, we have champagne du stomp. A bottle of champagne. Um, I'll drink. drink the, take a glass of the dragon, please. Joe's gonna look at, well. at Alexander and go, I guess it must run the family because I was about to say the same thing. Yeah, that's something we got from dad. So the red dragon yeah. crush that. that uh... Whichever one is the strongest, please. Yeah, that's dra that, that'll be the red dragon crush. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, and uh, it costs you uh, a whole gold piece for, for it. Okay. Alex looks directly at Joe. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. You gonna pay? Do you not have money? You know me and money. You know how many books I would buy if I had money. He pulls out his wallet and it's got like ten gold pieces in it. And he act he physically gives it to Joe. Joe you always Joe say you want the me money to not you. spend you always say you want me to not spend my money on crazy books and things like that, so I figured it would just be best if you started holding on to my money. I mean, I don't have any problem with you spending your money on things. Just don't go... There are more things to buy than books out there, kiddo. Just so we're clear. It... No. No. Then I'll gladly hold on to your money. Okay. Now I, I want to buy this drink. <laughs> Joe will put down two gold pieces and just look at Alexander with just a... My god, look on her face. Yeah. Cool. Uh so uh yeah, you get you get your uh red wine. Uh quite strong, but very tasty. Um and uh, do you have uh, more conversations about your cards or otherwise? I will bring myself over to the other hooved member of our current group and tap her on the shoulder. Oh, who are you? Not very important, but what is important is I've seen you around. There are two satyrs sitting here with these damned cards. It's very strange. And so I show you my card as well. And it says um, Don John on it. I definitely do not pull out my card. Sorry, guys. Someone's at my door. I'll be right back. Okay. <clears throat> so you can uh, say that uh, you have your conversations about uh, about your cards or not cards in, in the case of Etri. Uh if you don't want to reveal that. Um, and, I think uh, everyone knows anyway. It doesn't take too much influence. But still. <laughs> uh, so. You start feeling very tired and ready to turn in for the night. Uh, what do you all want to do? Ronan tries to stay up as late as possible. All right. He's sitting um, in the bar, just staying awake, waiting for the girl to come. Yeah, he does. That's terrifying. All right. Is uh, is anyone getting lodgings at the inn? All right, Hammy. I'm gonna get a room for both of us. You're gonna stay in it all night, right? Did we pass any shops? on our way to the inn no Damn. well if if you did they were closed because it was late at night and that's, everything that's, seemed to be closed that's fine did we pass any <laughs> <laughs> uh, well uh yeah you you i mean you being the always looking for <laughs> some shop uh you, you might have noticed uh, uh uh, something that might be a shop. Well, I did see one place I wanted to go see. And we can go there in the morning after you get a good night's sleep. But I I really should check it out now. 
I'm sorry. Did I say if it pleased your highness, or did I tell you it's time for you to go to bed? No, but it would be nice if you started addressing me like that. I'd feel a lot better about our whole situation. Well, your highness is going to grab the back of your head like a <laughs> tuft of hair and go, you're going to bed. And this is a very funny image for everybody to see because he is 6'4 and she is 5'6. So... I have to drag him down a couple, a couple of inches. Well, you're going to bed. All right? All right, all right, all right. Just let go. Ow, 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 ow. She'll let go very quickly. All right. Yeah. But you want you. Everyone might also notice how uh, Joe uh, is definitely strong, strong for her petite uh, figure. Uh, all so, right. am I? I'm not dumb, wizard boy. But am I safe in assuming that we're all going to somehow meet up here tomorrow to go over the, these magic oh. cards? I'm not leaving, don't worry. I'm staying here all night, and we're going to find that girl when she comes in here. The one that was in our dream. I I would not put anything past you. I don't know you, so I'm not going to put anything past you. If anything goes wrong, just scream and I'll be down here in a jiffy. Okay. All right. Also... If you see this one and she starts to poke the side of, of Alexander's head, sneak out. Don't let him scream as well because he's not supposed to. He should know better. <laughs> right, your highness? Alex is making a mental note to learn silence. <laughs> <laughs> so people cool. can't rat him out. Um, yeah. He just kind of sh sighs in defeat and nods and starts kind of moping his way up the stairs to wherever their room is cool yeah uh so you, you it costs you five silver pieces per room uh to uh get a room does everyone get a room does your room no i'm just saying like in the what do i need to pay um yeah, so are you going to fall asleep on the table? I'm going to try to stay up. I'm waiting okay. for this girl to come in. Yeah. So you, you are feeling very, very, very tired, and you you are quite certain you will not be able to stay all, up all night. I'll try. try. Irene okay. is also going to try. I feel like she's too excited to try and sleep. OK. Uh, she's going to share that bottle of alcohol that she's purchased. Mm-hmm in an attempt to keep them awake and cheerful. <laughs> right. If, if they're going to be up, <sighs> please keep an eye on this one. And then I'll take my own five silver room. <clears throat> OK. Uh, so uh... What are uh, your um, sort of nighttime routines as you go to bed? Bark barking dogs. <laughs> All the doggos. Joe has learned out of habit to wait until Hammy goes to sleep before resting. And it's mainly because from her marine training, she usually stayed up to keep watch. And then once she feels like he's asleep, she'll go to sleep as well. All right. And what what uh, what are Hammy's <laughs> nighttime routines as you go to bed? Alexander's nighttime routine is he actually writes in a journal. So he'll pull out a quill and an ink, an ink bottle, and uh, spend about a good half an hour, forty five minutes, writing in a journal, kind of logging his day before he'll let the, the ink dry, close the book, and then practice maybe about 15 minutes on the violin. And he's gotten progressively better as he's tried to learn the, vi the violin. And um, then he would turn in for the night. All right. Uh, and what about 
Etris nighttime routines. <clears throat> Etri will um Etri is going to back up the door. Not only lock it, but keep it from <clears throat> opening with whatever furniture is in oh, the really? room. Okay. Not all the firm furniture, just something. Mm -hmm. And then check all of the places that I could make it escape or where uh, anyone could um, enter. Could enter. Yes. Yeah. Enter mm -hmm. and see me. Yeah. So you you, you have a have a window, but uh, other than that, you can, you can sort of drape it over. Mm -hmm. um, all right, uh, and uh, it uh, like you you stay up for an hour maybe. Uh, Ronan and uh, Irene, but but you you get the sense that you, you're you're sort of you're starting to close your eyes, and you drift away and then you come back to it and and it's like you're five minutes from falling asleep. Okay, I still try to stay up. Okay. Is uh, and I'm looking Irene also. She's like trying to like pinch her cheeks and like keep herself awake a little longer. It's only been right. an hour. Yeah, but but you uh, are you are like you you don't remember ever being this sleepy. Tired from our journey. Yeah, this this alcohol is very strange. By the way, my name is Ronan. I don't think we've had a proper introduction. I sort of blacked out for a few minutes there. Uh, anyways, I'm Irene. Nice oh, to meet you. Nice to meet you. If I if I fall asleep, will you wake me up? Uh, well, I don't know if I can actually stay awake. I'm struggling here. Okay, you you can go to sleep. I'll wait for the lady to come. You guys oh. get to sleep. Okay. And so she'll go and get herself a room as well. All right. Yeah. <laughs> sort of dragging right. her hooves on the stairs as she <laughs> goes up to her room. Yeah. The the bartender says, uh, as as you're the only one left, says, uh, I don't think whatever you're waiting for is coming. Oh, she's coming. She 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 sent us here in the first place. Of course she's coming. She won't just leave us. Tell you what, I'll I'll uh, tell tell her if she comes uh, if uh, oh if she comes that you are here. It would be perfect. Could you listen? I'll pay for two rooms. If she comes, let her stay in one of the rooms. That sounds good. Oh, great. Okay, I'm gonna go to sleep. Make sure you tell her to stay here. And uh, yes, I will. Okay. So okay. go go please go with yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, what are uh, what are Irene's nighttime routines? Like, do I have any strange sleeping habits? Is that well? Uh, like, <laughs> like, 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 I mean, yeah. Well, if you have any, but uh, but more like like what what do you do do when you get in uh, to prepare to go into bed? Like, do you? Uh, I imagine if she's tired, she's probably just going to sort of take off her muddy clothes and just sort of flop, throw her backpack on the floor and just flop onto yeah. the bed. <laughs> just <laughs> curl up in the blankets really quick. Yeah. Uh, and what about uh, Ronan? Uh, he's got, he's just, he's normal. He doesn't barricade doors. He's just going <laughs> to take off like his backpack, his cloak. 
put him on yeah. the ground next to the bed and then just go to sleep. If he's All got right. a change of clothes, he'll put that on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I, is, is everyone, uh, are you sleeping in your armor? Anyone sleeping in their armor? Imagine wizards having armor. Yeah, you don't have armor, but the others do. Yeah. Joe doesn't wear armor. <laughs> Joe's just sleeping in her oh, yeah. You are um, a barbarian. Alex Alexander would take off his um his leather armor. Mm hmm Rini's gonna it. take off her hide armor and Yeah. It's all muddy. She's gonna put it on the floor. Yes, I would I would like to dry my clothing, yes. Yeah, right. It is it has been quite uh quite the weather. All right, so uh everyone falls asleep in a comfortable bed and uh you sleep you have pleasant dreams. Or no dreams. Sometimes people don't have dreams. Uh, but uh, nothing out of the ordinary this night. That was last night. Um, and I'll say that uh, Ronan wakes up first. And when you wake up, you find yourself not in the bed that you went to bed in, but in a forest. More magic. And, and it's uh, not raining, so let's remove that. And uh, you, uh, the the forest is shrouded in a cold and wet mist and uh, you see the other people uh, that you went to uh, well that you met yesterday around you still sleeping and you are in whatever clothes you were in your your jammies or whatever you have when you sleep. I, I guess Ronan and we'll just like sit there, wait, not sit there, but look around a little, see if he can find anything. He doesn't wake anyone up. All right. You look around, you see trees, you notice uh, some distance away when you look to your left there is a dirt road it seems to be going through the forest but other than that you you just you don't see anything and uh, uh, eventually everyone else wakes up one by one in whatever you went to bed in do I still have the blanket that I grabbed uh no no well i mean a blanket you grabbed you mean the one that you're you were yeah, holding I just, like, burritoed myself in a blanket oh okay sure you, you are burritoed in a blanket <laughs> yes you are burritoed in a blanket and my backpack is gone yeah you look around you don't see anything you see your your other the other people you see the the sort of foliage of the forest and trees and nothing else. And everyone wakes up to the same, same situation. I, I mean, I think Irene is just looking around in stunned silence, just just kind of quiet for once. First thing I'm doing is testing reality. I am going to uh, do the tricks to distinguish dreams what? from reality. 
you know, p pinch yourself and stuff like that? Pinching yourself does not work. What is... You know, what, what is... You check, check your hand you, to see if anything is strange. And you check faces of objects that you know should have faces. And if they are not detailed, then you are in a dream. So you look upon your the other people around you. I look at my hand and I look at a couple of my objects and I'm sure at that point they would all have distinct details and nothing would be wrong. Joe just sits so, down, looks around, and goes, All right, what magic nonsense is this? What, uh, what objects are you referring to? Uh, me? Yeah. Um. Mm -hmm. You've wo you've woken up in in uh, the garbs garbs you you uh, went to bed in, and uh, your backpack and everything you sort of took off uh, is not there. Okay, so I, I do not know that I'm not in a dream. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you look at your hands, they look, they look real. And, and you can see the other people around, and they look real. I don't know if that's enough. And you can see there are leaves on the ground, there are some brushes, and everything looks as detailed as reality. And you can hear some crows. Hammy, Hammy, you awake? Get up. Come on, can you get up? No, no, no. Hammy, get up. No, they Hammy. Me up. No. Hammy, no. look, three books. <gasps> books! And he, like, jerks up. <laughs> Wide awake, bright-eyed, <laughs> crazy morning hair. <laughs> realizes he's in a forest his eyes kind of narrow and he looks over at his sister and he's like there were no books you wouldn't know You're, you haven't snooped around uh, good good point he kind of like pulls himself to his feet and takes his glasses off of his face and rubs his eyes and put his glasses back on and he's like there's no buildings here people don't put books in the middle of the forest wait why are we in a forest? I think it's a magic thing. By this time, Ronan will start walking down the dirt road. Hey, oh, crazy yeah. wizard man. Wait. <laughs> he just keeps on going. He's, so, he's going to find this lady. <laughs> so you... Uh, you come on to the because you're you're not on the road you didn't wake up on the road but a bit off the road and as you got, come uh to the road you can see sort of uh black pools of uh water uh splashed here and there and and uh, on on the dirt road um you look to your left and you can not see more than 20 feet in that direction mist uh covers your your view in the other direction, you there is mist, uh, but but lower, um, and you can see uh, maybe a hundred feet. Uh, the path leads uh, and then takes a bend to the to the left, and you start walking on that road. Yeah. Uh, well, this. What is, is everyone else doing? This is odd uh how did how did we get here i think that this it, i must i must be dreaming this this can't be real joe's going over at at alexander and and give him a a not too hard but still pretty hard nookie do i feel that sure uh Ow, 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 stop it, stop it, stop it. 
Kind of like bats her hands away. <laughs> You're not dreaming. I don't think you dream about getting nuggies, do you? Mm, no, those are nightmares. Stop it. <laughs> Might as well go follow Mr. Wizard Boy and see what's going on. How curious. Ah, it's true. You believe. Do you find that to be more nightmarish? And we rested in the nightmare stables. Um, Irene is going to assume that this is some kind of divine intervention from her deity because it's all about <laughs> mist and obscurity. And so she's like, <gasps> she's kind of like all the connections. It's like a puzzle going on in her brain that's not very smart, but she's she's pretty sure this is what's going on. Um, so she's going to say a little prayer and be like, oh, okay, this is, this is all this is. We, we've been chosen. Everything's great. I yeah. would like to stay basically on the path, but use the fog and the shadows to, uh, stealth my way anywhere. I don't okay. like this. Uh, what is Irene's, uh, what is Irene's holy symbol? That would have required me to choose one. Um, I would assume <laughs> it's probably the symbol of uh, Lyra, which is it's yeah, an but, inverted but, triangle uh, with mist on it. Yeah, but but in, in what form is your holy symbol? Uh, probably just like a like a pendant or something. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. Would you have that on your person when you slept? Yeah, I would assume she keeps it on. She's probably just got like her tunic and that and everything else, like her hide she took off and her backpack she took off, so. Okay. That's probably the two things on her person. Yeah. Uh, and I don't, uh, like everyone has maybe jammies, so commoners clothes or something like that. Yeah, basically. Uh, but uh, uh, other than that, uh, everyone, can, everyone can remove all equipment except uh, a blanket and a holy symbol on Irene. Yeah, the... I forgot my blanket. Thank you. Can I wear it like a cloak? <laughs> it's kind of well, actually, no. I'm just gonna put it out. over my head and like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, you you said like just remove everything? Yeah. Like fully remove? Like, yeah. Or just unequip? Like gone? Yeah, remove. You don't. Have We're not getting it back. Oh shit! <laughs> I would yeah. argue that because of Alex's obsession with breaking into places, the one thing that mm -hmm. he would keep on his person at all times would be his thieves' tools. Wait, I don't have my backpack? No. I think um, that at the very least... I, I would think, like... I oh, go ahead. Okay. I would like to say that the dagger does not need to dry. <laughs> oh, yeah! I, I, don't don't have, I don't have a dagger. Shoot. Are you sleeping with it on your person? Holding on to in your hand. I can't, I can't yeah. cast spells. I'd probably just keep like a like a one or two hand axes with me just in case I, I need to like chuck something at, yeah. at whoever intrudes on the room. Yeah. But so no, I, I it, would definitely put aside my javelin ball. Yeah. It, it doesn't make any sense for any of you to hold on with your hands to thieves' tools, hand axes, daggers. They may be right next to your bed and ready for you to strike anyone who's, or maybe even like in, in the bed, but not on your person. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, Alex just has common clothes. That's yeah. it. And no money because yeah. he gave it to his sister, who apparently did not bring yeah. it with her in this nightmare world. Yeah. No, <laughs> so a no holy one. symbol and a blanket and commoner's clothes. That's it. <laughs> Well, excuse yeah. me. If I'd known we were going to some otherworldly forest, I would have. I wouldn't have brought money as my first thing to bring. <laughs> I know you. I know you would have, and you would not have brought any books for me to read. So. You probably find some book anyway. You sleep around enough. I wouldn't put it past you. I yeah. don't have my spell book. Awesome. Uh, you can cast spells oh. that don't require. Uh, yeah. So. Trips. Basically, uh, whatever prepared spells you have, you you still you have I just, prepared. I just know them. Uh, you know them, uh, um, and whatever spells that don't require a, a verbal or a, a, a material component, 
uh, you can cast. Um, you can prepare any new spells. You have these spells uh, until you find a new spell book. So whatever is uh, in your spell list that is not prepared, you lose. Unless you find your spell book again. But, uh, but I don't know if you have any of those that mm -hmm. are not prepared. Oh, you do have uh, six spells. Oh yeah, those are with the cantrips included. So the question is, you, you should know six first level spells. How many can you prepare? Uh, five, but two of my six are ritual, so I only have four prepared. Uh, I can only see that you've got four spells. So it's four spells. It's six spells plus your two cantrips. I'm pretty sure. What? Uh, I'll double check. You know, four. four oh, oh, sorry. God, it's three. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, wait. Uh, no, I'm I'm looking at the wrong character sheet. Jesus. Uh, that's for an Okay. Yeah, that's uh, that looks more. But how do you have second level spell slots? Oh, it's what? I have a, I have a feature. Ah, right. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, you have four out of five spells prepared. Yeah. You could prepare. You could have prepared another spell. Yeah, but I don't have. I mean, the other two spells are ritual, and I can't really. Can I prepare ritual spells? Of course, yeah. Hmm. Well, so you can you can choose another to prepare because uh, it's fine. You got all of these spells. All right. Uh, so you travel on the road. Uh, I have a question. And you can... Go ahead. DM. Um, as we're walking along this road, does it look like there's any soot on the ground? Uh, soot? Mm -hmm. uh, no. Okay. You wouldn't find soot here. In this specific place. Um, so you, you travel uh, uh, confused and uh, naked and afraid. And uh, you travel for several hours until you reach a uh, sort of an opening in the canopy and, and you can see uh, because the, the, the trees are sort of they're following very closely to the road and, and you can not see uh, very deep into the forest um, but uh, maybe three or four hours into the travel uh, you can see in the distance um, some enormous gates blocking your path uh, looks something like this and uh, oh, you see two uh, large statues, uh, headless, with the head lying on the ground uh, in front of them, with this uh, enormous uh, gate uh, in between them uh, that is currently closed. And this is maybe a, a hundred feet tall wall. Wonderful. Uh, it's it's closed. You can't tell from from like this is maybe a a, a hundred hundred and fifty feet uh, away from it as you see it. Okay. Can we 
you walk closer. Yeah, I mean, we found we found where we where we can go. So I guess we just keep going, right? Only one direction, and that's forward. Let's turn go back and just sit in the forest. As much as I would love to do that, no. Can of sarcasm, Hammy. We're moving forward. We all know it. You're no fun. Go ahead. I'm oodles, and oodles of fun. So you travel toward the gates, and uh, once you're maybe 30 feet from the gates, they squeal and start opening by themselves. Oh, that's polite and ominous. Hey, look, the gates are open. Let's go in. So observant, this one. Mm. After you. Hey, Hammy, do me a favor. No, I'm not going first. No, hear me out. It's not about that. I, I, I have no problem going first. What what is it? She's gonna put a hand on your shoulder and look at you with a smile and say, When I get my stuff back, remind me to smack you over the head with my maul and then she'll pat your shoulder and walk ahead. Mm. Delightful. And he'll kinda hang his head and follow behind her. Alright. Is everyone going through? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, okay. Uh, and as you all pass through the gates, uh, uh, they by themselves close uh, again, giving a uh, an ear piercing screech. And. Uh, uh, how tall is Irene? I think she's five foot six. Let me just check. Mm -hmm. Yeah, five foot six. Cool. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, a, a quick session zero thing I, I forgot about. Uh, everyone needs to have an alignment, uh, even though that's weird, but everyone needs to have an alignment. No problem. How do you put an alignment on D and D Beyond? Description. 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 Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, I think everyone except uh, except Ronan had that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So you could continue on the path. Uh, with the forest uh, clutching onto the road, and you can see up uh, in, in the sky. It's it's a cloudy sky. Uh, you can see some uh, like there's a, a sun behind it, but it's it doesn't uh, get through this to the the cloudy sky. And uh, you continue your travel. And uh, after another few hours, you can see uh, there is a a sign of life, I suppose. Uh, you, you can see that there is a path leading off the road. Uh, the, 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 the road keeps on going forward, but there is a uh, uh another road going off uh into uh into your uh, toward your right and uh at the intersection you can see two children uh a young girl maybe 10 years old a young boy maybe 7 years old uh, the boy is clutching on to a st 
stuffed doll and looks sad um, while the, the girl seems to be um, consoling the brother. Ronan goes over. Hello! We're looking for a lady in a hood. Do you know where she is? Uh, Absolutely the... not. I'm not touching this. The girl says, I don't... Uh, I don't know. Will you please help us? Oh, no, 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 we're not helping you. We're just trying to find a lady. Uh, if you at don't that, know where she is... At that moment, Joe's gonna walk up behind Ronan and just grab the back of his head. Not hard, but hard, but enough to where he knows she's behind him. And go, back up, wizard boy, I got this. Okay, you, you'll find a lady for us. Go, do your thing, Joe. Bully them to death. Joe's gonna give him nasty side eye and get down on eye level with the kids on her knees and go, Hello, my name is Betty. How can I help you kids? Uh, uh, there is a monster in our house. And and she points uh, on, the, on the road that leads off this path and uh, uh, you can uh, see uh, there a... Uh, Hold on. Why do I not find the place? Uh, come on. Okay. Uh, you see a small mansion flanked by several outbuildings. Um, and uh, the girl points toward the, the, the small mansion says, there is a monster in our house, and uh, uh, we don't know. We can't go in there if the monster isn't dealt with. Okay. Well, first of all, it's very brave of you to make your way out here to look for help. Can you help us? Will you tell me your names? Yes. What are your names? I'm I'm Rose. And, and this is Thorn, my brother. Well, Rose and Thorn, it's very nice to meet you. I'm sure we can think of something to help you out. Is there anything we need to know about the monsters before we go back in there to help you? It's in the basement. We've never seen... The basement? Yes. Our parents went there few hours ago, but they haven't returned. Well, all right, if you could just lead the way. Here, she'll offer to pick up Rose and Thorn and carry them, uh, like one on, on her back, one in her arms and go, well, just tell me which way to go, all right? Come here, I'll carry you there. Uh, so they're, they're just gonna start walking. Please, please follow. I, I want to... We don't we can't go in. It's too scary. Joe, hold Can you on. Please we... have... Joe, Joe, come, come here, please. Away from the children. Joe's gonna turn around and put a finger up to the kids and walk up to Ronan. What? Listen. We don't. We don't have anything to do with them. They. If this place is magical and it's all hallucination, they're not even real. If it is, if they are real. They'll find someone else. We're trying to find this lady who summoned us here in the first place. That's our goal. What if the lady who summoned us here is their mom? Alex will kind of speak up next to Ronan. Ronan will go to the children. What's your mom's name? Are you uh, asking them? Yeah. Uh, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Does she... Is she magical? Does she do spells and sorcery? I... I no, I don't know. No. No. Okay, no, no, no. How about... Do you have a father? 
Y yes. Is he magical? I I don't. No, no. No. Okay. Do any of them have hoods? And do they have cards, black cards with words on it? And he'll pull out his card. It says seer. <laughs> with says, a bunch uh, of eyes. Why are you a a asking us? C can you help us? I can't help you unless you answer. It's, you know, it's just how it works. Alex is going to proceed to slap Ronan in the back of the head. Be like, they're just children. This is going too far. Oh, okay. Fine, 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 fine. You said there were monsters in the basement. Y yes, and and our baby brother is in, on the third floor in the nursery. Okay, there's a baby brother in a house with monsters. Please help. Are we in a magical place right now? No. No, it, this is part of normal plane, normal planet. Yeah, yes? Okay. Yeah, Ronan goes back to the group. So they have a baby in the house, and there's a monster. That's, okay, that's not good. Even I, like, saving that baby is sort of important. But... There's no lady with a hood. Yes, but the kids are in danger, and when someone needs help, you help. Sure, but... I mean... Wizard boy, I would say the same thing if it was you, and right now you're grading on my last nerve. Okay, we can, we can help them. Sure, why not? But just remember that we're trying to find this lady. Okay. This, this Believe me, you, I cannot forget even if I wanted to. What? I could not forget even if I wanted to because you okay. bring it up every yes. few minutes. Just, just remember, that is our main priority. And this this thing saving these children, I it's sort of important, but it's not our main goal. Just remember that. Thank you, a wise and mighty leader. You're welcome. I think Hammy saw that Joe definitely rolled her eyes, and she just kept walking after Rowan made that comment. All right, Rose, Thorn, will you please show us the way there? We'll be more than happy to help you. Oh, okay. And and they start walking toward the mansion. Uh, Alexander is going to turn Joe to falls. Itri. And say so you're you're pretty sneaky, right? I kinda lost track of you in the forest. We're doing this? We're actually doing this. Look, look, the biggest priority right now would be to get the baby to the siblings. And then from there perfect, they can figure out. Perfectly the good other path. Look, 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 look. That, that one doesn't have scary children. Look, look, look. The, first of all, the baby may not be as scary as the children on the outside, so we need to help the baby. But second of all, if we can help the baby, then we can at least eliminate half their problem. I mean, we're in a town, so there's got to be people around that could help these kids as well. So we could get the baby out and at least prioritize the children and then get them help. <sighs> but if you, and I can, if you and I can sneak in there... You know, get around quietly in case there's <clears throat> something else in there. We could get the baby and leave. I don't have any tools to deal with this, but as long as I don't get caught, I could. Yes, I think we could do that. Yeah. Still don't like this. I don't. I don't like this either. I don't like the fact that I don't have my basic equipment on me. And he kind of like pats himself down. He's looking for his pan flute. He's looking for his quill. He's looking for his thieves tools and realizes he has none of it. And he just looks very, very perturbed.
yeah uh all right so just kidding so is everyone following uh the children yeah oh and alexander okay. would introduce himself to irene because i don't think he has <laughs> And yeah, she right. introduced herself as well and reveal her card, um, which I think I mentioned already, didn't I? So the, the cards came with you. Oh, okay, they did? Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yay. So I have a card and a blanket. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I have a card and clothes. <laughs> Look, this somehow came with me still. Um, but hi, I'm Irene. And... Helping is my favorite thing to do. And if you want, you can roll in sight. Yeah, totally want to roll in sight <laughs> on that. 23. Yeah, helping's not her favorite thing to do. <laughs> but you see she's eyeing this mansion that looks very opulent. <laughs> well, it's okay, because reading is my favorite thing to do. <laughs> yeah. And and looking at the mansion, it uh, it is brightly lit. Uh, uh, you can see lights coming from within. It doesn't look scary, so get in and get out, right? Yeah, sure. Get in, get the baby, get out, and then we'll find other people to help with the monster situation and then move on, but... We can't leave a baby in there. Baby. Uh-huh. All right. So, uh, you come up to, to the mansion. Uh, hold on. I'm doing stuff. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, you come up to the mansion and, uh, uh, let's see here. I can uh, move us over to it. Matt? Uh, though I don't know if this light. Oh, first map of the game, guys. Hey. Uh, does everyone see this new map? See the outside. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you see a wrought iron gate with hinges uh, on one side and a lock on the other that fills this archway of a stone portico. Um, oil lamps uh, hang from the portico ceiling and would actually light up it, light it up. Um, uh, flanking a uh, set of oaken doors leading into the building. gate open if I just stand in front of it. It does not open by itself, no. Damn it. Okay. Can I push it open? Yeah. You uh actually it would be a pull, but you notice <laughs> as you push it, it you notice the sign that says pull. Uh and uh, and you pull. Uh and as you open it uh the Rusty hinges uh, shatter the silence with a sudden cries of anguish. I think my body is too old to go in first. Someone else can do it. Sorry, I'm just experimenting with the dynamic lighting. The house is invisible. So this is the wall? Yes. Yeah. Um... Alexander will approach the kids and squat down as low as he possibly can and go, by by chance, is the door unlocked or is it locked? It, it, it is unlocked. Okay. Um, great. What? Where's the quickest way we can get to your little sibling? Uh, up, up the stairs? going to look up at the building. Does it look like it's just two floors? Uh, it's a three-story building. Okay. Um, 
And you said that your little sibling is on the top floor? Uh, on the third floor, yes. Third floor, great. When we get off the landing, um, do we uh, go to the left or the right? We want to get oh, in there, get your sibling, and get out as fast as we can. On a third What was that? Katie? What, did I hear something? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so, so you, you peek, uh, in, uh, through a window, uh, which window that there are, uh, I don't know if you can see those, but, uh, there is a window there, there's a window there. Uh, Not very clearly. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Yep. No, you're good. Did you have anything weighing your heart? Sorry, I think I was muted. Is there a way to walk down here? Um, like along the sure. side? Yeah, yeah. Are there any windows I, I, over? Uh, looking down this, um, that, that does it. Uh, you don't see any. Any windows on this wall now? Oh, that's my place. Creep around to the back of the mansion. Okay. What is uh, everyone else doing? I'm waiting for someone else to go open the door. <laughs> <laughs> the wide open door, door, and we're not going to go in it. I'm waiting. The door <laughs> isn't wide open. open. The... Joe looks at everybody for oh. a look of come on, and then open yeah. the door. Yeah. Uh, the the uh, iron gate is uh, is open from uh, from uh, Ronan opening it. Uh, but is is Irene going around the back? Has we'll everyone else moved around building? back? <laughs> okay. Yeah, you can move move your character there. Yeah, they're straight up two different maps. I swear. I want to see if there's any windows on the back. Yeah, <laughs> looking at the back, you see you see several windows. Okay, I'm going to carefully peek in the window. Okay, uh, you see uh, part of a kitchen. It looks like uh, you see a a dining table uh, with uh, a some chairs uh, around it, and uh, there are some uh, plates with uh, some uh, food still on the plates. Okay, so somebody's left in a hurry, probably. Okay, um, I guess I'll creep back and sort of go back around this way okay to the front and, again uh, i don't want to break someone... windows or anything <laughs> <laughs> was anyone initiating the opening of doors do we have a keely in this party <laughs> i mean Joe... sorry your your voice is really uh robotic or lagging Is this better? Yep. Yes. Okay. I then you went quiet. Have push talk on. I'm sorry, what? Joe, Joe was going to go in since no one else was. Okay. So Joe uh, opens the doors. Uh, Okie dokie. So you open the door. Uh, that reveals a foyer. Uh, hanging on the east wall of the foyer is a shield emblazoned with a stylized golden windmill on a red field, flanked by framed portraits of stony-faced aristocrats. Mahogany-framed double doors leading north are set with panes of stained glass. Nancy. Alex, are you planning on doing anything about that?
Is someone opening a door? I'm seeing a little thingy. Yeah. Come on, Joe. Okay. We gotta get in, get out, quick. Joe. Do you Joe, want, any, you want Joe monsters? Gives, Joe gives Ronan a look and then slowly moves her hand toward the door, pulls it away. Repeats the process two more times, and then the, the third time just opens the door. Okay. Uh, so uh, you reveal into a wide hall that runs the width of the house with a black marble fireplace at one end of the and a sweeping red marble staircase at the other. Mounted on the wall above the fireplace is a long sword with a windmill cameo car carved into the hilt. The wood paneled walls are ornately sculpted with images of vines, flowers, nymphs, and satyrs. Um, the decorative paneling follows the staircase as it uh, uh, circles upward to the second to a second floor. And uh, you can also see several doors leading out of this uh, for, uh, main hall. Can I examine the long sword on the wall? Sure. Um, it looks like a a, a nice long sword, uh, and as I said, on the hilt you can see the uh, a windmill cameo uh, carved into it. Oh. oh, follows over the staircase. Okay, so uh, both Joe and uh, Ronan are going upstairs. What is everyone else doing? Alex, are you sure you don't want to do anything about this? We get the baby, we get out. That's what we said. The loud one and the other loud one, going up the stairs. Yeah, you, you've got a good point. We could probably make it up there faster and quieter than they can. Um, hey, guys. I will say at this point that Joe is not always allowed. Not that Joe would be stealth at this point, because Joe can stealth. Especially, oh, well, I suppose you wouldn't have any armor anyway. No, you're you're really you're really sassy character. With the idea that Joe actually knows what she's doing and that she would be quiet. That doesn't place Ronan. Uh, Ronan. At this point, Joe. Ronan can Joe, do quiet. He's not dumb Joe, when he's quiet. Joe would grab Ronan and on the shoulder and go, Ronan, I agree that our mission is to be quick and painless. It requires you to shut your mouth. Can you shut your mouth? Joe, do you think I'm a fool? Joe's going to put a hand over Ronan's mouth and go, maybe we'll just keep all the questions yeah. I'm asking rhetorical. Joe, you got to stop talking. You're not being quiet enough. Hand is actively over your mouth, and she's whispering. You can't talk. Yeah, I, I pull it. Okay, sure. Unless, unless you, you pass my nice strength, feel free to, to try and talk. Oh, I, I'll be honest. I can barely hear you. All right, so going to uh, stealth up the stairs. Okay, Joe and uh, Ronan are stealthing up the stairs. Yes. And uh, Alexander is uh, asking Etri about the longsword. Yeah, Etri, can you use a longsword? Etri will turn around and I, Alexander, and the sword. Uh, sort of. 
Well, I don't know about you, but I woke up with nothing right now, and if there is something dangerous in the, this house, it's best we be prepared. We're not taking it out of the house, per se, so I don't think Joe can get too mad about it, but it wouldn't hurt for us to be, you know, a little bit more prepared. What do you think? I would like to inspect the sword further. Mm -hmm. Do you grab it off the wall or just look at it? Uh, initial looks are without touching. Okay. Uh, make an make an investigation check. Okay. Uh, it, it it looks like a a, a decent longsword, functional longsword, actually. So it's not display. No. Not for just display. Oh. Nice. Definitely not within my wheelhouse, but in a pinch, it's better than, actually, it's not better than my horns. <laughs> if it's not better than your horns, then I'll take it. But I figured you'd be, you're, pro you're instinctively more sneaky than me, so I thought you having something to defend yourself while sneaking up on something would be best. A sneaker needs sneakers tools. This is not a sneaky tool. That's fair. Um, and Alexander will take down the sword and um, take it with him. He doesn't right. like to be super sneaky, but he does not like to be at the front of the fight. And if something comes in front of him, he needs something. He needs to be able to stab it. Yeah. So you can you can add a long sword to your inventory. Yay. And uh, what uh, was Irene doing? Irene might want to check out this um, dining area in the back because she's seen it through the window. She's uh -huh. able to get through there. Is this a doorway? Yes. So okay. you open that door. Yes, please. All right. Uh, that uh, reveals uh, uh, the, uh, as you see the dining room, the centerpiece of this wood panel dining room is a carved mahogany table surrounded by eight high back chairs with sculpted armrests and cushioned seats. A crystal chandelier hangs above this table with, it, uh, with which is covered with resplendent silverware among which are eight plates holding morsels of food. Uh, each showing signs of having recently been eaten. It uh, looks as if the din dinner party left mid-meal. Mid uh, mounted above a uh, marble fireplace is a mahogany-framed painting of an alpine valley. The wall paneling is carved with elegant images of deer among the trees. Red silk uh, paint, uh, painting of an alpine... Uh, sorry, that's the same... Red silk drapes cover the windows uh, and a tapestry dis depicting hunting dogs and horse-mounted aristocrats chasing after wolf. A wolf uh, drapes uh, or kangs from the iron rod bolted to the east wall. Uh, the children are uh, staying uh, outside. Good. Yeah. Um, um, can I check if the food is warm? Uh, yeah, you check the food, it's warm. Like, maybe just by taking a bite. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, you uh, taste, uh, it tastes uh, uh, delicious. Like food, yes. And uh, uh, very, very nice. Yeah. Can I grab a few pieces of silverware and shove it in my tunic pocket? <laughs> sure, you can do that. <laughs> cool. Okay. And then that's it. There's no other doors from there. Uh, there is another door on the east or here. Sorry, that's the wrong layer. This here. Oh, in the south. Yeah. Wall. Okay. Um. Yeah. I will go over to that and open it. Okay. You open back into the main hall. Awesome. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, uh, I guess we can move uh, upstairs. As the, yeah, as uh, the two characters uh, have already gone there, uh, you come in there first. Uh, so Joe and uh, and Ronan come up to the second floor, uh, and you see. Um, lit oil lamps mounted on the walls of this uh, elegant hall hanging above the, above the uh, mantelpiece uh, is a wood framed portrait uh, of a fam family a father and a mother with their two children a boy and a girl uh, who look um, familiar uh, being the two kids you saw uh, cradled in the father's arm is a swaddled baby which the mother regards with a hint of scorn um uh, you can see um the mother uh hiding a uh dagger with a jade hilt on her side uh oh. stand, standing standing family photo uh yeah uh standing suits of armor flank wooden doors in the uh, north and south walls each suit of armor clutches a spear and has a visored helm shaped like a wolf's head uh, the doors are carved with dancing youths, and the red marble staircase that you walked up uh, continues uh, spiraling to a third floor, and you feel a cold draft coming from upstairs. Joey. Is anyone else also going up? Everyone else? I will follow the others. I will take... Yeah, I'll take... They're coming out of the hallway. Third. Ooh. Well, second. Bleh. 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 Excuse me. Joe, <laughs> you can use one of those spears as your <laughs> as your weapon. <laughs> Sammy got uh, sick of our crap. <laughs> I, I, I need to move you because you can't move through walls. Oh, got it. Yeah. So there um, you are. If uh, if Alexander is coming up behind Joe, uh, he'll tap her on the shoulder. And, Joe, Joe very softly whisper to her uh, Joe how good are you with the long sword she'll give a look um, like, like, like she's gonna make a, make a comment but then she'll look at the sword and, t and still kind of go it's not my for nothing, but I can make two how are you with a spear she'll point at the spears uh not not good, but you'd probably have a better chance if we run into something with a long sword, and he'll give her the long sword. Right, Joe has long swords. Okay. Even and I will yeah. remove it so. from mine. Yeah. Joe will also look over at the spears though, and look around and and uh, ask what. Um, what Ronan just did. Can anyone use a spear? Anybody want a sword? Spears uh, are simple, right? I think so. Joe's gonna walk I over and I'll I'll ask for a spear. There is a spare. Joe will grab herself a, a spear as backup and then pass the spear to Irene. Okay. As you grab the spear, it uh, uh, it's heavy and unwieldy. For whom near her? It, it like more come. than a normal spear? Is it heavy yeah. or it won't come loose? Um, you can you can loosen it, but it's it's um, effectively it's not really usable as a weapon. It looks like it it's made for ornate purposes. Oh, so it's decorative. I mean, if you can I use may. it as an improvised weapon. Joe would would look at the spear and and toss and um, she would feel how heavy it is, and I think she would just break it over her knee. And hand the stick to Irene. It's decorative, but a stick is better than nothing. Thank you. And then she'll hold the 
the spearhead. It's mostly it's mostly decorative, but look at Alexander and go. Not a weapon, but something cool you can keep from the trip, I guess. Also, for, I'll, I'll also break a spear and remind me if, if you want to if you want to stick hit with. Uh, no, I have zero intention on being in the front line, and he'll take the head of the spear. All right. Do that one more time and, and give one to Itri. He might be able to use it. Either the, the head of the spear or the look at stick. Itri. So look at Itri grab the spear from her here, bust it over her knee, and hand it to him. Itri just stares at you. spear you're better off with a stick but you can also take the spearhead as a fun little souvenir <laughs> I mean, technically it's a souvenir if... that can stab people no Alex come on I, I'm just, just saying here. something's better than nothing but yeah let's Dude. go upstairs we're going to keep going. Cool. Okay. So I'm just going to stand here and be left high and dry by Mr. E Tree again because he's so much smart and superior. All right. She drops on the floor and goes, fine. Don't take my help. Whatever. And grab the long sword. As you shout up to the two stealthing people who are trying to go upstairs. <laughs> okay. So who was going first? Um. Etri really does not want to because there are other people in here that he does not trust yet, but also he trusts himself. Well, Joe walks past Etri, she accidentally shoulder checks him really hard, but doesn't hit Alexander as she walks by. Okay, so Joe goes first. And Alexander will go second. All right. Muttering something under his breath about her needing to be kinder to people. I need to get used to these uh, tokens. Uh, okay. So you walk up to the third floor. Um, hold on. I need to... I don't think your friend really understands the situation that we're in. Even I know how the people better than her. Ops kind of ponders to himself for a second. He goes, well, that's really her story to tell. But let's let's just say things have happened in her life that's made her okay. be able to people a lot less than most of us. Okay. Let's see here. We come to the third floor. Um, she better learn how to people more. You uh, walk up. More. You walk up these stairs and uh, thus far uh, the, the stairs from the first to the second floor were, were clean, but uh, you can see uh, as you walk to the third floor, um, it's dusty, uh, and uh, um, as you reach the third floor uh, or, or get, get uh, there, you see uh, a dusty balcony overlooking the stairs you tra traverse, and uh, as you step onto the uh, and, and and you 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 sort of you see this suit of armor in the in the uh, west uh, side of the room, um, draped in cobwebs, uh, and there are uh, oil lamps. Uh, or actually, there are uh, uh, torch sconces uh, with torches lit, um, with the uh, walls carved with woodland scenes of trees falling leaves and tiny critters.
you step onto the I guess uh, Joe is standing on the on the third floor. Alexander seems to be stuck in the wall. Oh, interesting. Uh, let's try and move everyone Thank so you, you can move. Uh, so, because uh, you're traveling up the stairs, um, as Joe reaches uh, the top, the uh, torches, um, the torch uh, does isn't lit anymore, and you are in darkness. the The lights from under or downstairs are also uh, you you don't you only see darkness under uh, downstairs. I can't see anybody but Roman now. Yeah, you are in darkness. Whoops. That deleted the yes. whole map. <laughs> Everyone can see Ronan. Because Ronan is oh, geez, very I'm bright. I'm special. Obnoxious. And... I can't, but, I, but my entire screen is great. All I can see is Ronan. That's it. I can't see Joe or anybody else. Yeah, because we're in darkness. Yeah, everyone is in complete darkness. So that means I can't see my token? Uh, you can you, you can see yourself, I think. I can't right? see myself. I'm, I'm only saying I can see Ronan. Oh, interesting. Oh, I know why I can see Ronan. Um, his character sheet is set to public instead of just for him. Ah, uh, right, right. And just make sure uh, uh, see, everybody's character okay. sheets is assigned to them. Yeah. Uh, okay. Can Ronan cast how do Create bonfire, at like right here, I guess. Create bonfire. Yeah. It's... Uh, I think uh, that's in your hand. It doesn't. What do you What do you mean? Create bonfire is a you have a bonfire in your hand and then you can choose to throw it. No, that's a separate no. spell. Oh, it's a different spell. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, that's like create flame or something. Uh... Right, right, right. Um, oh, does it? It sure. doesn't say anything about light, but I assume it has light. Uh, great bonfire. Mm -hmm. uh, five foot cube. I think that just sets up on fire. What? Yeah, it makes a bonfire on the ground, and it does damage. But it and then it, but it's say a thing about light. Wow, that's weird. Can you the fire? Otherwise, it might burn them. Right. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I guess because it, it doesn't in itself, uh, um, it, it doesn't it in itself make light, uh, but. Uh, the not... You know what? Uh, you ca you did see thing. you did see torches on the second on the on the third floor. You can light one of the torches. Okay, I'll cast firebolt on a torch. You can you can do bonfire on a torch. Bonfire, sure. I'll do bonfire on a torch because right. I have no other way of lighting torches. Yay. Yeah. It is. Uh... So let's see here. Okay, you're back in lightness. Uh, the Torch lights up. Do we wanna move up? Get the baby? Get out? I agree. Let's get this thing and get out of here. That's yeah, funny. I agree. <laughs> Okay. They didn't say what direction uh, the baby was, though. So, uh, just um, okay. So as you as you 
move around this room, uh, you see uh, that the suit of armor uh, starts moving. Oh. Uh, and it uh, animates itself. Yeah. It's time to roll for initiative. Oh, shit. <laughs> Hey. Lovely. Fourteen. Yeah. Oh shoot. That was that was loud. Let's go down on that volume. What's your uh, uh, Alexander? Uh, my mod is a plus three. My mod's the plus three. You go for me. Okay. Let's see here. Me too. So, alright. Oh, did everything reset? Really? I hate uh, Beyond 20. <laughs> what the? Wow, there's a lot of wow, there's things a lot on of here. Weird. Yeah, these are, these are the other campaign's players. So that's oh. great. Uh, uh, let's. Uh, <laughs> That's fine. We can roll uh, again and just add in our old numbers. Yeah. As yeah. I roll a natural twenty. Oh. Uh, oh. Damn it. <laughs> I, I rolled a nineteen. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wouldn't mean, mind keeping those. We, we can have the new numbers if if you, because I screwed up. It's my fault. Ah. You're taking away like twenty. Can or have to. Well, you you can take whichever. That's fine. Great, I'm yeah. taking the twenty-three. I, 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 I screwed up. I'll give you this. <laughs> uh, We're not getting the TPK today. <laughs> no, we okay. still will. Don't you worry. Yeah, we've got plenty of time. Uh, at the place. Where the hell is that? Synchronize the combat tracker. No thanks. Why? Why is that even an option? That's so stupid. I guess. I guess if you can, if you use it properly, then maybe makes sense. Okay. Uh, yeah. So you, everyone notices the suit of armor starts uh, animating, uh, and uh, Alexander, you go first. Disengage action, open this door I'm in front of, and shut it behind me. Okay, so you go inside here? Yep. Uh, Alright. It's uh, darkness inside. And uh, yeah, you can't really see much, but then you, you close the door behind you. Yep. Uh, uh, Alright. Just a, just a ear piercing scream, and then a run and a slam. Yeah. All right. Uh, Rona, your girl. I will cast Firebolt. With a 23. That's a good 23 one. for a Firebolt. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that, uh, that hits and damages the armor. Is that your turn? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Joe, your go. All right. Uh, I would like to rage. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay, so that's just plus two to my attack. Yeah. And I'll swing at the thing with a long sword. Go ahead. Using both hands. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, oh, I'm I am way off the map. Okay, uh, 17 uh, hits. Uh, oh, sorry, no, 17 misses. Yeah. That's not good. This is a suit of plate armor. Does it... Okay, so I hit the rage thing. Did it add it then? Um, rage is... Yeah, oh. I think it's... Uh... Yeah, normally you're just... You hit with a plus two, right? Yeah, but my question is because I just I just hit the 
there's a little racing on the bottom, and I, I just hit the little square. But I don't know yeah. if it was added in or not. It's my attack. Uh, yeah, but it, it's, it's to the damage regardless, so it, do, it doesn't help you hit the damage target. But um, what, what, wouldn't that be a plus two to attack with my strength based weapon, which is a long no. sword? No, okay. it's uh, it's plus two to damage, well, not attack. Yep. Um, so un unfortunately, the seventeen misses. Is that your turn? That's my that turn. Was, uh, quite the heck in here. Uh, okay. Etri, after go -go. this, after this, Joe's gonna bash your head in for your sassy freaking comments. No, I was saying that uh, there's no way in hell that I'm gonna hit this because that was a good hit, and it still missed. Yeah. You can uh, attempt to flank if you want to do that. I could have flanked my If you're attacking it. So what is Etri doing? <laughs> I could have flanked. God dang it. Oh, well, no, you, you couldn't have. You don't have anyone to flank with, but Etri can. Oh man, that's not great. This is not great. Um... I guess I'll take a single turn in trying to do something here before I just get out of there. Um, okay. Ugh. Here we go. Do oh, you wait, have that's bonus? advantage. Uh, you don't have advantage. What? Can't you? Uh, oh, yeah. 14. It's just the plus, plus two. Yeah. A 14, unfortunately, misses. What? Uh, what was... No. Uh, not you, Sammy. Um, yeah. Yeah. What did you say? What did you say? Uh, what did you say? I thought I thought the satyr just had hope attacks. We could do against the ramus. What this, the satyr has? I'm sorry. I, I I have a ram attack. I don't have a hoof attack. And it's a flat roll. Yeah. So that would be fourteen. Yeah, yeah. So this, so the fourteen misses, uh, and uh, we go to the armor's turn. Um, he's gonna slam one of you. Uh, one, two, three. It's Joe. Okay, he's gonna attack Joe. So it turns toward Joe yeah, and okay. slams you. Uh, you take one that damage hits. from its slam. As you are raging, you take half damage, so one damage to you. It slams you again for another one damage. And uh, then we go to Irene. Sorry, this is going to be some background noise. Um, so, because I'm a cleric and I still have my, um, uh, my holy symbol, I can still cast spells then? Yeah. Okay, so... Um, let's see. I'm going to cast Bane. Okay. And so there it is. Makes a charisma um, save. Yeah. Five to charisma. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Uh, so I like to imagine that she's casting this um, because it costs a drop of blood. She just sort of takes her... Um, um, her little pendant and sort of like cuts her finger with it mm -hmm. and makes like a little prayer to um uh, what's her face <laughs> sorry the scratching in the background is driving me nuts okay uh to lyra and just sort of um uh All appeals right. to her to like make a make some tomfoolery happen yeah so, so it, yeah and it's Cool, and that's my turn. Okay. Uh, what is Alexander doing? You're okay. standing in a, a, a completely uh, um, dark room now when you open the, close the door. Yep. Uh, Alexander's gonna like uh, kind of push open the door and uh, peek it, peek himself uh, around the corner and shout, um, and shout, "You got this! You got this, Joe! I believe in you!" And gonna give her uh, bardic inspiration. Okay, so you're looking through the door. Yeah. Uh, you see uh, your new uh, 
adventuring partner uh, right next to you. And uh, wh who did you give Bardic Inspiration to? Um, I gave it to Joe. Okay, so Joe. Yep, I'm not sure why it rolled. Or that's kind of weird. But yeah, you have a d6 oh. of Bardic Inspiration. And then he's going to turn his gaze to um, the, uh, the suit of armor and mm -hmm. shout, everyone makes mistakes, but you're abusing the privilege. And I need it to make me a um, wisdom saving throw. DC 14. Yeah, it fails. Awesome. So it takes max vicious mockery damage of four psychic damage yeah. and will have disadvantage on its next attack roll. Yeah. Uh, as you mock it, you notice it is unaffected by the damage. Oh. There is no psyche inside to take the insult. With that, he will bash his head against the door and proceed to shut it again. Okay, so I'll, I'll say you shut it. I don't, I'm not gonna add. Okay. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. But uh, Ronan, you're go. Let's just do it now. Or I can leave it cracked. It's up to you. I'm on. No, no. Okay, I can cast Irene here. I'm gonna go up to the armor and like, you've made a big mistake by coming here. You know that? It was just, you're gonna die. Oh no, right. that's 13. Uh, 13 misses, unfortunately. Oh, but that was 21 in the crowd. That was yeah. So good. Okay, that's my turn. That's a yeah. huge amount of damage. Uh, all right. Uh, Joe, you're going. All right, let's try this again. Uh, is that a natural 20? Uh, that, that's a natural 20. Uh, that's that's natural 20. 20. Yeah. With both hands. So, two-handed 13 damage plus uh, uh, eight damage. So, uh, plus two rage. Plus two rage. Uh, yeah, so that's 23 damage to it. Ouch. That, uh, that uh, gets a nice... Uh, uh, dent into the armor. It's looking very much uh, about to break down. Uh, Elfie, your go. Or Itri, sorry. Alfie now? Yeah. <laughs> Alfie, it's your go. No. <laughs> Itri. I'm not dealing with this. Come hide in the room with me. <laughs> Stealth buddies together. I I genuinely will. I'm gonna have to um, disengage and back okay. in here because I'm not a frontline fighter. All right. And I have nothing to work with. I'm yeah. just saying I offered you a stick and you turned me down. A you stick open. isn't gonna help me. You a stick is better. It's better than nothing. Yeah. It's really not. <laughs> You know what? You hush up because you're not using a stick. Are you closing the door behind you? Yeah. Okay. They're both uh, in a dark room. Uh, yes, and uh, then we go to the animated armor. I'll add. So. Uh, the animated armor is going to strike one of you. Uh, one to three is uh, Joe. One to three Thank is Joe. Joe. It slams Joe. For t 22 to hit, three damage. Great. And the second strike misses. And, uh, and we go to Irene. How is Joe looking? I'm down. I'm down one third. My my, my health. I'm down to ten hit points. If I keep getting slammed like this, I'm I'm probably gonna, gonna go down. Okay. Um. I don't want to hit anything else. Shocking, I know. I'm going to. Ugh. Sorry. Um, okay, I'm just going to healing word Joe. Okay. And that's a bonus action, right? Yep. So six hit points back to Joe. Back to full hit points. 
And I'm out of spell slots, y'all. <laughs> I only have two. <laughs> okay. And then, so I still have an action. Can I take that silverware and just chuck it? Oh, uh, by the armor? way, what's uh, uh, your armor class, uh, Joe? 15? Okay, because it would have mm -hmm. had minus two to those attacks, but the, I think, 20, yeah, 22 still would have hit you even with the minus four. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Sorry, what, what, what were you casting, Irene? Oh, I was casting throwing a cutlery at this thing. <laughs> what uh, what cutlery? Oh, your the cutlery the, you picked. the cutlery I grabbed from downstairs. <laughs> okay, uh, make a, a an improvised uh, dexterity attack. And how would I do that? I think you're proficient in uh, improvised weapons. I think everyone is. Uh, improvised, or is it? I feel um, like that's more special. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a tavern uh, brawler. I don't think that's... Yeah, it might be tavern yeah. brawler. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so you can uh, roll a d20 plus your deck. So d20 plus two. Okay. So d20 and then so eight plus two. Ten. Okay, that misses. So you throw the cutlery <laughs> and it flies to the ground next to it. That was a warning shot. <laughs> and that's my turn. Yeah. You better uh, back down. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's literally the only weapon I have. Yeah. I just, I just oh, imagine that he's like. Oh, I yeah. just imagine. Yeah, I just imagine. You, you, could, you can cast a spell and a cantrip on the same turn. Sorry for cutting you off. Go work yourself, statue. Oh, or, 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 oh, yeah. <laughs> go forth I mean, yourself. You can, <laughs> yeah, go you forth you yourself. That, if, if you want to do that, you can do that, because you it's know... It's okay, it's okay. I really I'm the dumb, and I made a dumb, improvised okay. choice. Yeah. That's <laughs> fine. Uh, so, you've got cut three on the floor. Alexander, your turn. Um... Oh, gosh. Uh... Alexander is gonna crack open the door again. Okay. And... I guess throw the spearhead that he got at the at the um, armor. Okay, roll a d20 plus your strength modifier. D20 plus zero, wonderful. Oop, a uh, sixteen. That unfortunately misses. It just ricochets off. Yeah. Um. I, I guess he's gonna leave the leave the door kind of cracked open to give it a little bit more light, and then if he could just <laughs> roll a perception on the room, I guess. Um, See if there's anything in there that could help. So just uh, on a glance, um, if you look into darkness, um, you have to use your action to really peer in, but but you you'd pretty much still see darkness. You might hear something, but you you don't. Uh, um, actually, with your with your passive uh, perception, you kind of feel like there's uh, uh, there's nothing there. Yeah. I'm just oh. gonna look look back at my newfound friend and kind of shrug. <laughs> like, hmm. <laughs> what do we do? <laughs> that is the end of my turn. Okay. Uh, Chris had to leave, uh, which. Uh, Makes sense. We're we're running uh, at the <laughs> end of the session without a break. Uh, uh, sorry about that. Um, okay. Uh, so let's see. Ronan has the bonfire. So what was that? Deck save one damage. Oh boy. Okay. Uh, well, at least there's one damage there. Uh, and uh, then we go to Joe. Okay, and I get, do I get flanking because Robin is right here attacking with me? Uh, no, you'd have to stand on opposite sides of the uh, creature. Got it. Yeah. He'd have to be at least here. 
16 does not hit. 16, unfortunately, not does not hit, no. Oh, wait, Bargain's creation die. Yep. Yes, you were inspired. Go ahead. D6. Hey, 18. exactly what you needed. It has an AC of 18, so... And uh, I'm attacking yeah, two yeah. Yes, indeed. So describe how you destroy this uh, animated armor. For okay, anybody yes. watching or peeking behind a door, when Joe goes into a rage, Joe becomes very quiet and just relentless, and she just goes through and just cleaves through the armor with the long sword, and watches it just just clatter to pieces. And as she does, she just looks up and sees Ham and sees Hammy peeking through the door. Exhales slowly, and goes, "Hammy, get out here! It's safe." And then she just sheathes her, uh, sheathes the sword. Awesome. He will slowly push open the door, allowing all the light to come into the room that uh, he yeah. and Etri are in. Yeah, it's it's what you have right now. Perfect. Uh, so do we want to uh, end the session there? As yeah. You have a. Uh, uh, defeated this animated armor, revealed that uh, this house is um, uh, not quite uh, lovely as it first seemed to be uh, as you came to the third floor and stuff started happening. Um, we'll see uh, where that goes. And uh, sorry about stealing all your stuff. <laughs> That's uh, part of uh, the introduction that uh, makes this campaign a brutal, scary, and uh, should give you the feeling of hopelessness. Perfect. Well, we all feel very hopeless indeed. Well done. And with that, this will end session one of Curse of Strahd. Everybody say goodbye to YouTube. Bye, YouTube. Goodbye to YouTube. Bye, YouTube. Bye. YouTube. Bye. Happy dungeon delving, everyone.